views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Now is the time for your weekly dose of natural medicine and education. Join Campbell practitioner Ginny Rutherford and psychic Todd Rolson as they share their inspiration with humanity and discuss the healing benefits of Campbell medicine. The results are astounding. Coming up in the next hour of Cambo Talk Radio, discover how Cambo realigns the true self. Now, here are your hosts, Ginny and Todd. Weddy, weddy, Cambo, Cambo, weddy, 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 Cambo, Kuda Kai me, Kuda Kai me. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cambo Talk. I'm Ginny Rutherford. I'm here with Todd Rolson, and we're your hosts. Hello, Todd. Hi, Ginny. How's it going? Oh, it's another wonderful day. It is a great day. Um, today, uh, see, last week we talked about the science of Cambo. Yes. And today we're going to go into how to actually choose a practitioner. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited about this because you know I we lo- we love to we're trying to make this program as basic as possible for everybody who's interested in Cambo, and I, I this is as basic as it gets, but it's so important. I, I think it's truly very very important, and there's a lot of stuff out there. I, I talk about this a lot. There's so much glamorization, sensationalizing. Uh, Cambo out on the internet and on the web, and you get all kinds of differing views and information. So, so hopefully this will clear some things up for people, so they'll know exactly and feel, uh, who who they should be going to and why, and uh, feel really confident and comfortable with that decision. Yeah, and like with everything, you know, we're always we're working with the information and and the training, of course, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but. In the end, we always work with the frog and with intuition, right. and that's as basic as it gets, where it's like, what intuitively do you feel is the right practitioner or training or, you know, person for that matter? So, I mean, uh, I guess we should get into the training, don't you think? Well, yeah, I think the one of the big aspects of choosing um, a practitioner is really how trained are they or are they trained? Because a lot of people will go and have Cambo a couple times and now they think, wow, this is, looks really easy. I think I can give people Cambo. And then they're out there giving people Cambo and not really aware of all the implications behind it and all the possibilities of things that can happen. And just the energetic side of it. I mean, Mm. you're transferring energy to another person Yeah. and just being aware of how you manage your own energy is super important. And and I know Jenny's actually in teacher training right now. And so this is, this is a really good subject because the people who are in the training um, with IAKP are up in Northern Washington and going through this and it's a two week, a yes. two week course and it's quite intense. And it's very I, intense. you know, I just talked to her about this and a couple people have already dropped out because they, they realize it's, there's too much to do or it's too yeah. challenging or it's not what they feel into intuitively is correct. Yeah, I think some of it is that once they got there, they have the same mindset. Look, anybody can do this. It's so easy. Right. And then when they start going through the training and see how difficult it is and all the intensity of it, a lot of people just say, this is, I'm not the person who's going to be able to hold that kind of space. Right. And so, we, of course, the training we're talking about is with the IAKP. And, you know, I am a member, but I am not a practitioner, but I do see everything in energy. So when I see things that are correct, I always support that. And I'm kind of known for that in the universe, so to speak. But uh, so, Ginny, I mean, talk about the training that, you know, that the IAKP is is has put you through. And now you're training teachers. And this yeah. is the second training for you. Yes, this is my second um, assisting. And of course, uh, Karen, who is the founder and the head of the IAKP, has is also there. And she will be on the show next week. So I am super excited about that. Any of our listeners who really want to get into the depths of this from, to me, the foremost authority in Cambo. Uh, yes, really in, in the Western in, world. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you will not want to miss um, 
Well, hopefully show. we'll have a couple of shows with her because yeah. she she has depth and knowledge. Certainly, I can't even touch. And Jenny, uh, no, I'm Jenny's s- getting there, but still, yes, she she's been doing this a long time and has developed this uh, lovely program. But I think um, one of the main things about the training is I would want to ask the practitioner, "What was your training?" Um, yes. You know, there's a lot of people who go down to the jungle with a particular tribe and they will do training. And there is nothing wrong with that. It's just that they will have they'll do things differently because of the 13 tribes down there that still do Cambo. Each one of them do it differently. Yes. So there isn't any right way necessarily. It's just that that's how they do it. So, you know, I think that there's room out there for people to do it different ways if they want to follow the tradition of the tribe you know, great. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's awesome. Um, but the way we have done it at the IAKP is we've kind of geared it to the Western world because, you know, some of the tribes, they will, I think we've talked about this before, they will burn the gates and then they'll spit on the stick to activate the cambo and then put it on your open wound. And in, in the, uh, in the jungle, you know, there's people there with hepatitis and and other things that could get transferred. Right. So, Um, I don't know, in our Western world, we're not really too crazy about that, um, having somebody spit on the stick and then put it on our open wound. The other thing they do, too, that's quite different, some of the tribes, uh, they don't drink water beforehand. They actually will drink a kind of a soup of rotted uh, fruit uh-huh. that they kind of fermented fermented, uh-huh. and, and they will they will actually cook that and the and the women spit in it, you know. Yeah all night <laughs> as they're cooking this. And that's got to be amazing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there are some tribes who don't really drink any water beforehand. So I think there's room for every different way of doing it uh, and around the tribes, you know, and how the tribes do it. But the way that I like doing it and the way that I think I've been trained is that we're bringing this into a Western world and we have to fit it to every culture. Yes. Um, so that's their culture and that's how they do it um, because that fits in their culture. And what we do here fits into our culture. And, and I think that's a good idea. This is our culture. Mm-hmm. Um, we're a little more complicated. We need to know that we're going to be safe and, yes. and that the the trainer obviously or, or the uh, practitioner teacher obviously has a plan, you know, because we, we live in our brains. You know, that's how we're trained. Um, as, as beans. And so I totally agree with you, you, Jenny, cause I, you know, I'm looking at this stuff on, on space and time and, exactly. and seeing what works with each person. I mean, that's, a, that's what a good psychic does anyway, or a good practitioner. So what about the training? I mean, so what, what do you want to say to people about this? So what, what further? Well, I think this training is probably the most intense and comprehensive that I've ever seen. Yes. Um, oh, I would agree. Because I've been to the training to remind people. Um, I'm probably one of the only ones who's ever been to a training and not actually in the program. Right. But yeah, please continue. Yeah. So by the time, I mean, first of all, it's 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 quite complicated, the training in some ways, because you're working on your own issues and, yes. and moving those energies out. You're taking Cambo. And of course, the Cambo is bringing those issues up. And, um, and also you're learning how then to give that to other people. So what we, we learn about how to hold space, we learn about how to set our setting up, um, and we learn about how much water a person should drink and how to keep them completely safe. Because safety to me is the most important part of the whole process. Well, and it's not just that. It's like contraindications, indications, exactly. you know, looking at what people, you know, what medicines they are, or pharmaceuticals. I mean, this is... There's a lot to there's a, think about. There's a lot to know yeah. and um, a lot to think about exactly. So I think safety is a very important issue. So when you're looking for the, that uh, professional uh, practitioner, you know, I would want to ask them about some of the safety. You know, what what is it that they do know? Right. Um, and then there are contraindications to Cambo. And we'll get into that as we go along here today, too, so that people just have an idea. Um but your your practitioner should know those things, should yeah. know exactly whether you should be taking CAMBA or not. There's not a lot of contraindications, but they should know them. 
Right. Because it could it could have a you know an adverse effect on something and somebody and we, you know, kind of have a code to bring no harm to anyone. And, exactly. And to keep yeah. them very safe. So I think that's a big uh, part of it. Uh, so my two is their training. My top two is their training and um, how safe they keep people. Can they keep me safe? Yes. Uh, that, so safety. Well, so what do you mean by, you know, safety for you? What is that for you? That would be that um, they're going to know how much Cambo is appropriate for me that I should take. They're going to know how much water I should be drinking, and they're going to monitor that very carefully. Uh, they're going to know when the medicine should come off. Yes. They're going to know um, – really, they're going to give me space also to to do the work, but they're going to know that – um, if I, if I white out, have a, have a pass out, uh, they're going to know how to handle that. Yeah. So any, I want to know that whatever situation comes up, they will know how to, to handle it. And, and I just noticed in training, cause I, I attended a little bit when I was free and just to see the processes people, you know, when a person does white out, there is a process and a way to put position the body and, you know, to be with the person. Right. And I mean that. I, I have done camo myself six times and half the time I pass out. So exactly. it just overwhelms me. And I know I just felt totally safe. And when I wake up, I'm fine. You're fine. And it's, it's a fascinating process to do that. First of all, uh, but it is, is very fascinating, but I want to know, is there a bathroom nearby? Can yes. they, I want to know that they're going to walk me to the bathroom. I want to know that I am completely taken care of. Um, and that the space is safe so that there's not going to be some pets coming in or animals while I'm in the middle of my process, you know, rubbing on my leg or doing whatever. I just want to know that that is that I'm completely safe or that somebody's not going to walk in who's not yeah. a part of the circle even. So I think those are all important aspects of um, keeping a person safe. And a level of organization. I know Jenny loves organization. I do. And she <laughs> does look at this as clinical, which makes me comfortable in most people comfortable. I think we can all fit in that world. We get a little more uncomfortable in, um, you know, other worlds. Yeah. Well, so I, I think when we come back, mm -hmm. um, let's continue with, uh, some of the things and a lot of this is in our code of ethics, but let's continue on some of the things to look for and getting that. that Ooh, I'd love perfect. to talk about ethics too. So after uh, the break, after the break, we'll be right back. This is Ginny and Todd with Cambo talk. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. The earth is an ever-changing being. Goddess Light, shamanic healer, Brie Gibbs, guides us through the ascending worlds, bringing forth knowledge and truth. As a light creator, she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution. Join Brie as she shares messages from guides, spirits, ascended masters, goddesses, and others. Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Treat the body and expand the soul on June 1st with Lynn Brown. In this all-inclusive retreat, you'll treat your body with breakout sessions in the various elements of nature. Enjoy fireside chats while harnessing the healing energy of fire. Allow more light with more ease and activate that connection between the body and spirit. Call 206-931-7356 or visit lynnmbrown.com. 
Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Welcome back. This is Ginny and Todd, and we are Cambo Talk. And today we're talking about how to choose a practitioner for your Cambo experience. Yes. And so far we've got um, training, which is top of my list. And then secondly is being safe. So kind of set and setting and how safe do I feel? I think those are the two top on my list. Um, but there's a lot of other other things, and these kind of all wrap into um, how to choose a, a practitioner, you know, based on their own ethics and professional practices. So those are all kind of wrapped together, and I would be looking for for that also, um, somebody who has the proper ethics around um, Cambo. So we'll kind of cover a lot of those. Um, inter, you know, interchange them because they're not separate from each other. I would want to make sure that I had a a practitioner who definitely did have some code of ethics. Oh, of course. And professional practice. So my next one on the list really is to take responsibility for your own actions. Oh, that's a big one. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that one's one of those that crosses over into the ethics part of it too and your, yeah. your professional practice. But I think it's important that as – I mean I think this is what we should be doing in our own lives also. Yes. But as a practitioner, for sure, we should take responsibility for our own actions and um, and just own that. Uh, yeah. So what does that mean to you, like taking responsibility? Well, I can tell my own stories because. Yeah, we'd love to hear a story. But when I first started out, um, you know, I wanted to be a really great practitioner. and But mostly I, I wanted people to heal. And I was very attached to that. Mm hmm. And so I remember uh, doing a woman's circle. I had six people and there was a there was a, a young woman there. And I will never forget her because the lesson was so great. Um, for some reason, I was very attached to her, um, her purging out this anger that she carried inside of her because I could feel it and see it. And sure. I became very attached to that. And so it, I felt like I was somewhat so attached to it that I was kind of interfering with her process. Interesting. Instead of just letting the medicine do its work, the cambo do its work, and I was I was somewhat interfering with it, and I will never forget it because, um, and I did have to take responsibility for it. You know, yes. she she did say to me, you know, I you know I I need to have my own process, and I realized she was right, and I had to take full responsibility for my own actions, and that yeah, you know, sorry, you're right. Yeah, I was very attached to your your purge of that anger and that's not my responsibility so so would you say like you know a practitioner who who is basically out of ego or neutral or just allowing the medicine which yeah. to me that's very important somebody who is just like i'm gonna trust this medicine and just keep you safe i, I think that is the, the most important aspect because through yeah. that process and this was early on in my practice and you know, we're learning as we go along and I, um, but I will, I'll never forget it because it had such a huge impact on me because through that process, I began to learn what my role really is as a practitioner. Right. Yeah. And I, I've watched that. It's been fascinating yeah. by the way. <laughs> and, and I talk about it that yes. I only have those three roles and that is to yeah. put the medicine on, hold space and keep people safe. And that's really it. Their process is their process. Now, can I help them through that by you know, giving them more water or singing a song that might help them purge, of course. But I, to be attached to the outcome of all of that really is crossing a boundary. 
And um, I totally understand that. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So that that was a great lesson. And I, like I say, I, I really had a hard time getting over it. It took me quite some time because I, I realized where my own, you know, what was going on inside myself. So just to ask, continue that story now, after that happened, did she, what was next for her? Do you, did you? Well, I never saw her again, really. Yeah. And she took three sessions and of course her next session, I allowed her to have her own process. Nice. And I never, but I never forgot it. So sometimes I just think those people show up for us, right? Yes. Um, as our, as teachers to yes. us. And um, that's the way I looked at it. And I never really did see her again, but and and I think that's and then you know bringing up this subject, I think it's interesting to think about that you know Jenny's saying, "Hey, I'm here to learn too, and I'm going to be responsible for my learning and responsible for keeping you safe." And then you have to have a responsibility to show up and and, for sure. and be there. And to to I know for me that you know that safety is a big thing, and I imagine that's a big thing for everybody. I think so because you. You know, this um, Campbell will go where it's going to go oh, and it's yeah. going to do what it needs to do for people's uh, healing, the work they need to do. And I cannot be attached to what that, how that looks and, and how it happens. So um, letting go of that was a big, huge step in, in my own practice. And again, I had to be very responsible for taking um, responsibility for that action, for my own actions in that. Um, so I think that's important. If a, if a practitioner, you know, makes a mistake or does something that isn't, uh, what you're wanting and you bring it up to them, I think it's important that they take responsibility for that. Yes, I agree. And I, I think that's why, you know, I'm a believer in the IAKP and the training because everyone will be trained in certain ways to do things. And so you, you know, and you can, re if you've gone into a practitioner who through the IAKP and you, you're content with that and it feels good to you, you can safely recommend that this is what you'll get. And not only that, I mean, the medicine of course is sourced directly from the tribe uh -huh. and you know, there's a contract between the tribe and the, and the IAKP. Yes. And I think, I think that makes the medicine stronger in a way. I, you, I think it does too. And yeah. that goes to our, the next thing I would be looking for in my right. practitioner. Are they giving back to the tribe? Yes. Uh, because I think that is such an important issue. Um, th this medicine, you know, I, I call it secretion or I call it cambo, but this coming out into the world um, and these tribes have been practicing this for a long time. And they feel very um, attached to that. Like this is this is our yeah, practice. Yeah, it's our home. It's yeah. our forest. And this is our practice. And so giving back to the tribe, I think a practitioner should be able to show you how they're giving back to the tribe. Not just saying, well, I'm buying my Cambo from them, but how else are you giving back to the tribe? Are you sending money to maybe for a children's program or are you helping them, you know, keep their water clean or sending them other uh, supplies or other monies that they need? Yes. Um, so I think those are very important issues. Or just joining the membership, which yes. is I think 25 bucks a year. It's 25 for the, yeah. yeah. And so that allows, um, that allows the, the tribes to continue to protect the floor, forest. And yeah. so I think that's, that to me would be very key that, and that's the macrocosm and the microcosm, right? It Where is. we are, you know, we have to move past our little ego cells and start looking at the big picture. And the only way we can do that is being intuitive and looking at the big picture. And it seems I, so simple, but it's people are, it, they're challenged by that. They, very you know, much what's so. in front of them, what a person presents, and this is what kind of what we're talking about. It's not what a person says or presents. It's like who they are, who they're connected to, who they're supporting, is there ego? Is there um, a love for the medicine? Because I know Jenny, I mean, I have had a few psychic friends who every time they see Jenny, they see her as a frog. I mean, yeah. believe this. It's true. <laughs> They're like, funny. you're a frog. <laughs> I know. It, it, it does kind of crack me up. I yeah. go get massages sometimes from some intuitive massage therapist and they're going, uh, do you know there's a frog here? And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, and, and I love that. I love the, the, and that's a great compliment to me, uh, when I hear that. So, um, again, are they giving back to the tribes? That is super important. Um, the other thing then is, are they practicing within the limits of their competence? Oh, that's very good. Yeah. So, you know, it's one thing to, um, 
to just give a basic treatment to somebody who is in great health, um, young, and, um, you know, it's going to be pretty easy. But in this uh, line of work, we get people who are sick. Yes. Um, And there are ways of working with them that will be to their greatest benefit. And so working within the competence of what you know to do is important. And that takes time and experience and more education. And so I think it's important that, you know, that's just the ethical thing to do is that you don't go beyond your own competence. Right. And you're, I mean, you're working with a big variety of people with serious issues. Can you, you, can you name a few people who have investigated this medicine or, you know, their, their, their issues just... I've had people with Lyme's disease who've had yeah. some great results, uh, people with asthma, uh, people with um, depression and anxiety, some cancer people. Now, <clears throat> it's just helpful for them as far as some pain management. Right. Um, but there's all kinds of different things that people are dealing with in today's, you know, some people with digestion problems, um, just just all kinds of uh I get questions all the time from people about would Campbell help this? Right. And, you know, basically um, I have to sometimes do a little research too to see what their medications are on. Is there is it contraindicated? Um, and, of course, I also have the ability to put this out to um, other people in our group who are practitioners who may have worked in that area to get more information. And that's really what's great about having that structure because you can talk to other trained, you know, people who have been trained, so to speak, and, and bounce stuff off and, Mm -hmm. and get some feedback. And, and it's, so it's like a big web of, you know, uh, knowledge. Yeah, it really is. A lot of people will come wanting to, uh, get treatment for their addictions Oh, yeah. And so depending on what they're addicted to, it would make a difference on how you would treat them. Sure. And what they need to do beforehand and all the different uh, – because every addiction, every type of uh, chemical will have its own effect. So knowing that is super important too. Wow. Well, Todd, when we come back, um, let's continue along this lines. I want to get into some of the contraindications since we are at this point. Okay. So when we come back, let's talk about some of the – the reasons you wouldn't want to take Cambo. Sounds good. All right. You're listening to Cambo Talk with Ginny and Todd. We'll be right back. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundation-less. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundation-lessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible?
Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. All right, welcome back, everyone. This is Ginny and Todd with Cambo Talk. And apparently... Uh, at the beginning today, we did not introduce our kind of fearless leader, Justin, and I didn't want him to feel slighted because I know how he, yeah. he feels when we don't say uh, Plus we like say him. hi to him. Yeah, he's our favorite guy. He keeps us on the straight and narrow. So, hey, Justin. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't cancer. forget about you. Yeah, You're, I'm forgiven. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. forgiven. <laughs> All oh, well, right. He didn't say I was forgiven, just you. That's <laughs> just right. <kidding. laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you for that. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, anyway, we're, we're glad you're here. We're super glad you're here. I don't know what we do without you. You totally keep us um, on track and kind of calm us down once in a while, a little grounded when we get a little wild and crazy. Yes. So thank you. You are welcome. All right. So um, we've been talking about choosing a, a practitioner, a Campbell yes. practitioner, and we've kind of gone through the lists. And we kind of gotten down now to what some contraindications, and I really would like to talk about that a little bit. Okay. And any trained practitioner should know these things and should be asking you questions about some of your. I mean, we're not here to diagnose you or to you know to treat. And we're you. not allowed to diagnose. No, you. because that's not what we do. Yeah. But we do want to know some of the things that you are taking that could be contraindicated or some of your conditions. So people who have serious heart problems are completely contra, uh, contraindicated. Right. So they should never take Cambo because uh, Cambo is a, you know, the blood pressure rises and it can add some, um, you know, a little bit of stress to your, to your uh, blood flow. Uh, it's also a vasodilator. So it's one of those things that you should just never do. It'll cause some stress. Um, okay. If you are able to do aerobic exercise, though, uh, and if you've had stents, we can actually uh, give you Cambo if you've had a stent. But if you've had a bypass or valve replacements or any of those things, or if you have, uh, you know, any kind of heart disease, uh-huh. that would be contraindicated. You would not want to take Cambo. And, um, you know, your Cambo practitioner should give you those the list of contraindications ahead of time nice. so that you know that. Another one is if you've ever had a stroke you should not take Cambo for the same reasons as the heart issues um, because, it, you know, that rise in blood pressure. Mm. Um, if you are on medication for low blood pressure, now high blood pressure we treat, and Cambo has a way of sometimes just, uh, you know, resetting that. Mm -hmm. But low blood pressure, and we can give it to people with low blood pressure provided you're not taking medication for it. Generally, people with low blood pressure have other issues that are uh, that's why their blood pressure is low. Ah. Um, so we don't uh, give Cambo for low blood pressure. Um, if you've ever had a brain hemorrhage, so people who have uh, had head injuries and have had brain hemorrhages should never take Cambo. Uh, if you've had an aneurysm or blood clots, and I think the blood clots are very important because if you are prone to blood clots, yeah. Or if you're on a medication like Warfarin or uh, for blood clots, you should not be taking Cambo because uh, Cambo could loosen that up, that blood clot, um, and you would not know that. So that would be definitely contraindicated. And the other thing is that if you lack the mental capacity to actually make the decision to take Cambo, so if you have Alzheimer's or dementia or, if, uh, or any kind of... Um, 
mental retardation where you would not be able to make a choice to take Cambo on your own free will. That makes, that's common sense. Exactly. Uh, also, if you have any serious mental health problems, uh, excluding depression and anxiety. Right. So if you have uh, psychosis or schizophrenia or personality disorder, or if you have very severe cases of bipolar. Now, if you have like low-grade bi bipolar, uh -huh. we could give you Cambo. But if you have a very severe case of it, we would not want to give you Cambo. Not that it would hurt you in any way. It's just that it can bring on a psychosis because what Cambo does is it kind of brings up your issues. Right. And so um, we, just, we just say no to that. And, and just a reminder, everyone, this is medicine. This is not a hallucinogenic no, medicine isn't. in any form. And I like to remind every show because, you know, everybody hears yes. a lot about a lot of things. So this is a straight up medicine. So that's how we are approaching it. Yeah. So you're not going to have any hallucinations or anything yeah. like that. It's yeah. a, uh, and a lot of people think they're going, that's going to happen. There is a frog that does give you um, hallucinations, but it is not a Cambo frog. Yes. Uh, so the other thing is if you're undergoing chemotherapy or radiotherapy or for four, uh, four weeks afterwards. So if you have had that and you want to take Cambo, you would wait four weeks okay. before you would take any Cambo. Um, people who take uh, immune suppressants for any kind of organ transplants would be contraindicated wow. because it, would, it could boost the immune system and then that could cause you to reject that organ. Uh, women who are pregnant or may be pregnant mm -hmm. should not take Cambo um, in those early stages. Well, you shouldn't take it at all, but we just say do not take it. Mm -hmm. And also women who are breastfeeding a child under six months old because you're transferring medicine to your baby. Right. And yeah. so you would not want to. Uh, you're transferring that to them. We don't give Campbell for anyone under 18 in our culture. Now, in the tribal country uh, cultures, they will give it to the uh, children. Yeah. It's even used for inoculations yeah. and everything else, right? But we don't do it here in our culture because it's not really um, acceptable to, you know, burn in, in, you know, to your child, burn their skin and put you know, frog secretion on it. Right. So um, we just say no one under the age of 18. And a big one, and I've heard of people doing this, and it should never be done, is giving it to animals. Oh. And I just see, you know, I've heard of people who will give can't put Campbell on the nose of their dog or something. And I just, th that should just never be done, ever. Yes. Um, completely never should be done. So those are kind of, I mean, there's other little cautions. This is not an exhaustive list. So that should be a discussion that you have with your practitioner. Um, and, and I'd like to just mention, I mean, that's where responsibility, the practitioner is responsible for you in a way, and you're responsible for giving the practitioner all the information. I know uh, Ginny and I have talked about this, and she's had quite a few people who just aren't completely honest. Right. And I think that's your responsibility um, to inform the practitioner as much as possible, and that way you make a better team. Well, exactly. Yes. And it, and there's no judgment, you know, no, around of any not. of this. So um, I have no judgment. If you're, you know, if you're an alcoholic and um, you're going to take Cambo and you, I need you to tell me that because yeah. you may have a different reaction to Cambo that I need to be aware of. So I can, I know how to work with you Sure. or uh, any other kind of um, a drug. I would also want to know if you're taking certain supplements, like people think that supplements are safe, but if you're taking supplements that are for slimming, sleeping, or serotonin, I would want to know that because uh, of how it affects the brain and how Campbell affects the brain. I, I would just want to know it. Yeah. So it's important that you have that dialogue with your practitioner and that they they know what to do around that. And, um, and that's, that's a level of trust that, you know, will expand the the ability of the medicine to work for you because this is a this is a high level medicine so if you're going to go into a trusting the medicine trusting the practitioner just putting out there who you are and what's going on with you you're likely to get stronger effects from it exactly and there might be a way that we would do cambo differently if i uh, knowing what's going on with you right you know, i've had people who had these you know kind of heroic 
Cambo ceremonies and then they're out of it for a, you know a few hours and I know that they have not told me something and usually as I'm talking with them afterwards they go well yeah I didn't tell you this yes and I could have really prevented that kind of reaction they could have still taken Cambo but I could have prevented that and made it much easier for them yeah uh, if I would have known that ahead of time and so I just tell people don't be afraid to tell me what's going on yes so that I can give you the best possible experience. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> how are we doing here on time now? Got a couple of more minutes. So let's get back to our our list now that we've gone through contra contraindications. So, I mean, that's something that you should definitely be asking your practitioner. Is there any th reason why I shouldn't take Cambo? And they should know some of those reasons, or they should actually send that out to you ahead of time. Yes. <laughs> so that you know. Um, the other thing too, I think that, um, do they observe confidentiality? You know, for some people, they may not want uh, it known that they're taking Cambo. Maybe, uh, you know, this is not an illegal substance, but they may just not want other people knowing what they're they're doing. So sure. I think your practitioner should keep uh, that confidential. Um, I think that's a, a super important aspect. Um, and I think they need to really monitor their behavior so that they're not, um, you know, this is always an exchange of energy. Right. And so we are constantly having to check our own energy and manage our own energy as the practitioner. So can your practitioner actually manage their energy uh, so that they're not putting out any other kind of in energy such as, well, you know, sometimes uh, they can put out some sexual energy. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen that. Exactly. Sometimes they can, uh, you know, they, they maybe had a, a bad day and now they're putting out their own, you know, irritation or whatever it is uh, energy and you're sensing it. So they need to have the ability to clear their own energy and manage that so it's not being transferred to their their clients. Yes. I think it's a really super important aspect of it. Because we're, you know, we're all reading each other's information, right? <laughs> right? Yes. And you don't want to have that in your space. So um we're to the end of this little segment and needing to go to break. Uh when we come back, we're just gonna kind of close this, bring this full circle and um, talk about some things that are coming up and who we are going to have on next week because we're pretty excited. So you're listening to Ginny and Todd with Campo Talk. We'll be right back, everyone. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 425-451-0404. 425-451-0404. 
831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio, featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. And um, we've been talking about how to choose uh, a practitioner, a Campbell practitioner. And I think we've done very well. We've given a lot of information. We've given a lot of information. And I always say, if you uh, need more information, you can uh, go to CampbellKiss.com or you can actually go to the IAKP.org website because they have tons of information on there. And it's a great idea to go there anyway and just donate the 25 bucks, which a lot of that goes to the tribe, I believe. All of it goes, All to, of the it goes to the tribe. All of it so goes to the tribe. So you're helping preserve land and uh, supporting the tribe on all levels. So exactly. It's brilliant. Yeah, I encourage people to go to the IAKP and just look at uh, look through it. You can find practitioners from all over the world if you're looking for a practitioner in your area. Um, there are lots of them now. Um so yeah, that's the place I would be going. And I know we're we're basing, you know, we're talking about the IAKP a lot because, you know, first of all, Jenny is invested in that and has learned a lot. But I've also done a lot of research on on practitioners and different organizations and and we have covered that, you know, this organization is supporting the tribe. There's a mutual agreement. It's, you know, everything is aligned. But when I look at some of the other stuff out there, you know, some of these um practitioners or trainings out there are like, they're like, you have to come every year, you have to um, do this, you have to do that. And and I, I really want to mention that, yeah, we are totally supporting IKP because in our viewpoints, we've done a lot of research on what else is out there. And, and we love this. This it, To me, it's the best, my personally, what I've seen. And of course, I look at it, things energetically, intuitively. Um, I really like the IAKP. I think that's uh, that's super true. I mean, before I went and did training, I looked at a lot of different things. Um, there wasn't that many out there, though. I mean, usually, basically, you were going to the tribe. That's what I thought I was going to have to go back to the jungle yeah. and try to find somebody who would teach me Cambo. And, and then I found the IAKP, and I was like, oh, yes, because I had this real strong feeling that I wanted it to be in our culture, not not that culture. And again, I say there's nothing wrong with it. However you do that, there's you know people who go to the jungle and train in certain ways, and certainly there's room for everybody. Yes. And you'll be drawn to the person who's right for you. And, and maybe you want that very traditional experience. Um, and that's really up to you. So I we talk a lot about just using your own intuition about who's the right practitioner for you. Yeah, and that's what we want to talk about in this last segment is like using your intuition, using your own self-knowing to see what feels best on every level, whether it's a practitioner or the day you arrive. I mean, does it feel like you're supposed to be there? I mean, it's okay to go, hey, this isn't quite right. Or you go through the process just like the teacher training that's happening right now. A couple of people like, you know what? That's not correct for me. And and this yeah. is where we have to be allowing. Um, and, and I think that's a very big part of, of choosing a practitioner. Are they allowing of, yes. of the process? Are they allowing of who you are as a being? Because we're all so unique. Absolutely. If someone showed up and uh, for a, a, a session with me and uh, at the last minute, they're like, I just 
I'm, I don't think I'm ready yet. Yeah. Or for whatever reason it is, I would certainly honor that and go, yeah, you should be coming here when you are ready or when you feel like you're with the right person or whatever that may be. And I have that same obligation. So when somebody shows up and I feel intuitively that it's, they should not be taking this medicine, I don't even really have to give them a reason. Yeah. And I've seen that with Jenny quite often. She'll just say no. You yeah. know, or they did it one in one time and they're like, you know, you're not, it's not quite time. And that's, you know, that's like honoring you, both the teacher and the, and the person who's showing up for the medicine. It's like, we, we are a team. So what, yes. what works for you? What works for me? And I think having that consciousness is, it is, it's all about true support. And so, you know, we want to get to a more intuitive self-knowing support system where there can just a, there's a natural flow and the medicine is the center point right. of, and it, of course, if you trust that it will work on whatever level you need, but having this, this incredible intuitive support where there's a balance, it, it's an amazing thing. And I don't see that often. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, sometimes people will show up and I just know they're not supposed to take Cambo. Yeah. And I will sit and have a conversation with them about, uh, you know, how, my own knowing around it. And it's only later on that they, they realized, yeah, you're right. Um, wasn't time for me to take it. And sometimes they come back later on and it is time. Well, and what I've noticed too, is if people come with a lot of fear, then they, they, they can kind of block the process a little bit and we all have fear. So this is, you know, I've done this medicine and I live intuitively 24 hours a day and I always, it, I'm nervous when there's, I come yeah, a little bit, there's a level but of then nerves. I just shift out and be yeah. present. But, you know, it's important to get yourself into that knowing, like, I'm going to be fine. My intuition sent me here. This feels like the right person. It's like checking off the list. Yes, this organization feels good. This person feels good. This house feels good. This practitioner is is present with me. Mm -hmm. And then you can trust the medicine. Yeah, I have people show up sometimes because um, their friend talked them into doing it yeah. and they didn't really want to do it or their parent, you know, or whoever it may be. It wasn't, they weren't really called to be doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that there's anything wrong with them taking, I'm sure there's other people who do that and, and it's okay to give them the medicine, but I've had people who have come and I just felt like I, I was not supposed to give that to them right then. And we have a conversation and then find out that, yeah, you know, I didn't really want to do this. My, my friend talked me into it and I don't feel really ready to do it yet. And so let me ask you this, cause I know we have a little time left. So as a practice, as a person showing up for, um, for a session, so to speak, I mean, what, what would you like to see? Where, where would you like to see them or what would you like to see in them if they're going to show up for a uh, session with Cambo? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever thought about it. Um, a lot of people just tell me they were called. Okay. And that calling was just so strong uh, that they just had to do it. Nice. Um, so I think that's really great when people tell me that. But I don't, um, again, I try not to be attached to any of that. Well, I don't think it's an attachment. <laughs> I think it's a way to kind of help people get the framework of, yeah. of what they could do when they show up or how, you know, so what would you like to see? Cause you want to see somebody who obviously is rested, ready. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to see them not have yeah. had a big party night the night before. Yes. Um, I want them to be, you know, rested. I would love for them to actually, um, you know, not be doing some kind of water cleanse beforehand because that is really dangerous. A lot of people will say, show up and they, I've been on a water fast for the last five days. Right. When I know that, I'm like, I can't give you Cambo today. Yes. Um, because there are, uh, by, by doing that and then giving them more water for the Cambo, it could send them into some other types of uh, conditions like hypernutremia. Uh, those are the things I, you don't have to, eat special diet or anything else to do Cambo. You just have to fast that 12 hours before you take it. Uh, so people will try to get into that whole thing. I'm going to take a bunch of colonics and I'm going to clean myself out before I go to Cambo. And none of that is necessary. As a matter of fact, it's not even helpful. Yes. Uh, okay. Just, just stay away from uh, drugs and alcohol a couple of days beforehand. Beautiful. And then show up and. And be ready. And be ready to go. Yeah. yeah just be open. 
Well, Todd, I think we've come to the end of our uh, day. We've got one minute left here. I do want to talk a little bit about next week. Again, we have Karen uh, Kenya Dark, who is the founder and the head of the IAKP. She's going to be on the show, and we are super excited about that because she rarely does interviews. I mean, just rarely does uh, interviews. So I'm super excited about that. And then I also want to talk about um, our retreat coming up at the end of the month um, yes. on the 26th through the 29th. Uh, it's a residential retreat, so you come and stay. We'll be doing three days of Cambo and then having all this other energy work. You're going to be there doing your magic and uh, Lil Abrahamson will be there and um, it's going to be a great time. So if you have any questions on that, you can go to CamboKiss.com or uh, your website also, Todd. Yeah, and if, if something's, because there is a change of the websites right now, so there are phone numbers. So if you have to call either of us uh, going to either of the websites, which are linked, we'll get you in touch with the information. Yeah, what's your website again? It's just Todd Rolson, R-O-H-L-S-S-O-N.com. So, Jenny, till next time. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Have a great uh, rest of the week, everyone. Again, this is Ginny and Todd with Cambo Talk. We'll see you, see you next week. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Cambo Talk Radio with Ginny Rutherford and Todd Rolson. We hope you enjoyed the lively discussion of Cambo and the astounding results it manifests. Cambo medicine is truly magical, and Ginny is a powerful guide to total wellness. To find out more about the sacred medicine from the Amazon rainforest and its amazing benefits, visit cambokiss.com. That's K-A-M-B-O-Kiss.com. 